Chuck with Razorback Off-Road. I'm real excited to share this vehicle with you as we've been uh, building it over about the last three weeks. It's been pretty brutal trying to get this machine ready to take to SEMA this year, 2019. We're gonna have a, this is gonna be a featured vehicle out front, so we're real excited for the world to see just what, you know, we really took this challenge on as a company because we kind of wanted to show everybody that, you know, not only are we passionate about the ATV and UTV industry, but we're passionate about the machines, the lifestyle and everything. And we really wanted to just showcase some of our talents. So I went to a couple of our engineers, Chris and Andrew, and said, man, I'd really like to build our own roll cage and a, and a, we had some ideas about a roof concept and really just build about as competent of machine that we could build that you could take out to Moab or here in Idaho, we run a lot of mountain trails, uh, look good while you're doing it, have comfort and be really, really uh, competent when you went out. In fact, um, the machine is the XC, which stands for extremely competent. So I figured I'd start up front and kind of tell you some of the stuff that we've done that kind of uh, makes this kind of a unique vehicle. So the first thing we did is we installed a winch, but Factor uh, 55 here in Idaho is an Idaho company and they make this flush mount, winch mount shackle that we really like. Um, we really like the HCR a high clearance suspension system. As you can see, we went ahead and upgraded this. Even though the Turbo S comes with really beefy components, we really plan on abusing this machine and getting some air out of it, so we really uh, felt the HCR suspension was a, a good upgrade. It looks really good. Then we added the Zebros dual rate springs, and I don't wanna get a lot into it. You can check out their website. But it really, th th so this started out as a 2019 Polaris Turbo S Velocity. And the reason we went with the Velocity is we wanted to have the ability to take a machine and really add um, our components. And I really felt that the Velocity had, didn't have very good low speed characteristics, uh, especially on washboards. So by changing out to the Zebros dual rate, we've really improved that uh, low speed ride on the machine. As you can see here, we have our Razorback off-road uh, folding windshield. This is a one-off windshield that we made for this machine. You'll also notice as you look inside here, we, and I'll tell you more when we get inside the machine, but we've designed our own aluminum dash panel to move the switches out. You can see we've got the, the pig logo in here. And these are access panels so you can get into the fuses because you know, the hard part about building a really cool machine, especially for SEMA, is making it so that in the off-road world that it'll hold up day after day and still take the abuse while looking good. So we wanted everything to be serviceable and accessible. In fact, even this bar right here, you can remove it so you can get access to the dash and everything. We're really happy with how this windshield all turned out. Now, as I move back, um, Lynn Hodges, who started a company in Idaho called ProMoto Billet, has now merged or moved into the UTV market and he makes a really um, neat mirror. It's a Sector 7 mirror. Um, I guess the only downside of these is they're pretty expensive, but once you use them, this is my third machine that I've had them on. What's really neat about these lighted mirrors is that um, you can move them anywhere you want and change the lighting pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these on it's, it's pretty neat. You know, if you need to look up on, high up on a hill or you want to flare out on the side of the road, you can just move these lights anywhere you want them. So uh, just, just a very good mirror. Um, well done, uh, Lynn and crew there for making such a great mirror. Here's the roof and we, we integrated a visor, which I thought was kind of a really neat look. Uh, we also put air vents in there so the air can flow in and, and over the top of the roof. But one of the things that we wanted to do with our roof, and we're gonna be releasing a version of this roof for the stock Turbo S, is we made this thing out of a full eighth inch aluminum. 
And you'll see when you get inside, we did a full length console. And what we wanted to do is build a roof that had some rollover protection. So um, if you take a hard header, you know, do an endo or something, you're gonna help reduce getting uh, rocks and things from protruding inside of the cab. As we move back a little further, you can see that we've done the Cognito doors on it. And as I mentioned, our crew built the entire roll cage and it was, it was really neat to be able to build something that was fit for me and my kids, as well as my wife. We did the rugged air. Um, here's the air hose that, depending on the type of riding I'm doing, if I'm out uh, running off road and we're gonna be racing, I've got headsets with, with air supplied air system on it. And we went with the mag lock so that it's easier to make the connection. And then it stores up here. If we're just out trail riding for the day, we have the rugged radio headsets behind the ear, so you have the microphone and uh, you can communicate back and forth. PRP seats, can't say enough good about these. It was a lot of fun to design these seats on the seat uh, designer. Um, we were able to pick our exact colors. I'm just really thrilled with the way they worked. They, these seats are heated and they also have lumbar support in them. And we'll talk a little more about the seats as we, as we get on with it. As I mentioned, we call the car, uh, it's the XC model, which stands for extremely competent. Doug Batchelor with Doug's Designs here in Mountain Home did the wrap. Um, Andrew Foster in our marketing department designed the, the look of the wrap. I'm just very thrilled with how all that worked out. Here in the back, you can see we run the HCR um, high clearance suspension in the back. Uh, mounted my antenna a little low. Normally you would mount the antenna on the roof, but I do a lot of trail riding, so I wanted to get the antenna down so it wasn't hitting the trees all the time. So, uh, you know, don't judge me too hard if you see it down low. We have our, uh, Rota, our, our Razorback Off-Road Rotopax fuel mounts here. Then when you get around to the back, you'll see that we did a one-off concept rack, and again, a lot of what you see on this is gonna start becoming available for your stock Turbo S after we debut it at the SEMA show this year. And uh, we're getting ready to load up here in about an hour. It's been quite a thrash. Also see here in the back, we're running our, our Rough Rider pad. This thing reduces the, the temperature of this rear compartment from about 140, 150 degrees down to whatever the outside air temperature is. Also did a safe craft, safe craft onboard fire suppression system. And Zach, I'm gonna have you back up a little bit and I'll point out that <clears throat> I have one fire nozzle here located and then we have another one that's mounted underneath the driver and passenger seat. Safety for me is a big deal. My family's gonna be riding in it. When you're in a four seater, the fuel tank is located under the right rear passenger seat. So I wanted a fire nozzle there. Uh, also incorporated a backup camera on this, and you'll see we took the Lowrance HDS, uh, I believe, yeah, this was an HDS uh, 9 that we put in this, so a big screen. We were able to tie it into a backup switch so that you have an actual backup camera on the Lowrance system, and that's this camera right here. Also did rear chase lights, strobe lights, and they also have an incorporated uh, lower work like, which we'll be showing you in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this fire extinguisher out. So this is a Tech 208 fire extinguisher. It's a little bit hard to fish out of here. We ran out of a little bit of room. But this is um, kind of a neat device, so it won't pop out unless you flip this safety device. And I've been so impressed with this fire extinguisher. I've uh, been running it now for a year. We reached out to Carl Johnson at Tech 208. We've made a deal to be the exclusive distributor for this for the uh, ATV industry. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more. Um, here you can see the helmet air pumpers. We have two of them on the machine. You can also see here you got the gas hole. That's where the gas goes. And then that's pretty much a, a tour of the outside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hop inside the machine and talk to you a little bit about what's going on on the inside. Okay gonna talk about some of the things that we did inside the car and I'm really proud of this steering wheel. So this, this is all completely wireless technology. 
And what I noticed is, you know, when you're in these five point harnesses and you're strapped in the back of the seat, it's really hard to reach the dash and all of the drink holders. So what we did is we mounted all of the uh, main switches that you're using out here on the dash. So for example, there's left turn. You can see the indicator we installed. Here's right turn. Um, this is your floodlights in the front. High beam, low beam. Uh, here's your horn. Push to talk for your radio. Everything is located right here on this. The other thing we did is we made this aluminum dash, and it's really hard to see in the video, but what we did is we moved all of the switches out uh, about two and a half to three inches to help you when you were sitting in the car to be able to reach the switches. We also wired these switches through here so we have redundancy. In the event that the battery should ever go dead on the steering column, you can run all the switches back up manually, so that's pretty cool. As you can see, we have the HDS9 Lowrance in it, and by building this whole solid aluminum structure in here, this thing doesn't move an inch. So when you're going over whoops and jumps, you don't have things rattling. I'm pretty proud of the fact that we went in and, and I went on to Amazon and bought a backup camera, installed it in the car. We interfaced it into the video portion. And you can see Alex wave, Alex. You can see Alex on the backup camera. On this big a car with all this roll cage and stuff, it's really nice to have that. So. I'm pretty proud of that. Also did the dyno jet. And, you know, I'm, I'm a performance guy, but the thing that I like about the dyno jet, you know, last year we were at Moab and I had some problems with the car. I was able to uh, read the codes off of the dyno jet. I called the local dealer. He walked me through the codes. Turned out we just had some water in the throttle pedal switch. So we were able to clean that out and, and get going. Without the ability to read the codes, it would have meant we would have had to take it into the dealership. <clears throat> so some of the other things that we did is we um, integrated the switch panel in and we've got our uh, communication systems here all wireless but we did a 3D printed drink holder. And Zach, I hope you can see this. So what we did is we mounted these at an angle. So we raised the drinks. Normally the drinks set about four or five inches lower. And again, when you're belted in, you can't reach them. We angled this one this way for the passenger seat and this way for the driver's seat. And then we used spray foam in the bottom of the drink holder. So we're quite proud of that. Um, keep your drinks cooler. We did the BM. Uh, B&M Hill Killer Switch or uh, Shifter, which is really neat because if you if you're going up a hill in drive, so you're in drive and you're going up a hill and you spin out and you got to roll backwards, you can just kick it forward and you're into reverse. So, and then you have to pull this trigger finger to go all the way into park. Here's where we located the switches for the uh, seat heater. Uh, oh, that's not mine. <laughs> no, actually, that's <laughs> this is the lumbar support for the seats. Um, and then this is where for this uh, race radio plugs in here and the other one plugs in over there. We also did, and I love these pads. I've had them in every uh, Polaris I've ever owned. These are PRP uh, knee protectors. So when you're sitting, your knee bumps it. Then you got a nice little storage bag back here. Uh, Cognito didn't have a mount, so we ended up just gluing and bonding these directly to the door. Uh, another neat thing that we did is if you can kind of motion over here, we put in the B&M uh, grab handles and then wired in the push to talk switches over here so that you can just push that when you want to talk and this one launches uh, grenades out the front. Uh, we have a integrated RAM mount, that's a Tech 208 product as well, that, uh, so you can mount a cell phone. And I have another one here. Normally when I'm running, I mount my cell phone uh, out and over here. So another thing that we did is, and Zach, I hope you can see it, is we built this integrated console. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the um, dome lights. So you have clear dome lights. And then we also integrated red lights. and. Those just aren't for, you know, cruising around at night. 
studies have said, you know, and, and I know it for a fact that red light doesn't interfere with your eyes at night nearly as bad. So um, when we're on the trail, we can have some lights in here and it doesn't interfere your vision uh, at night. Again, I'll turn the uh, dome lights on as well. And then you can turn them off. Another thing that we did is in the front and back, we put the helmet air uh, controllers right here so that when you're, again, seat belted, you can just reach up and control the fan speed of the helmet air from here. Uh, we have them for front and rear. Another thing that I didn't talk about in the back is we did a uh, exhaust cutout, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire the machine up when we get the microphone in the back. So when I flip this, I'll have straight exhaust, and when it goes back, we have stock exhaust, which is kind of fun. Loud exhaust, you know, the old saying, loud pipes save lives, but there is a point on the trail when you like it quiet, so I can choose the exhaust settings. Well, that's an awful lot to go through. Uh, thanks for sticking with me on this video. We're so proud. It's really hard to understand the sheer amount of hours and effort that went into this machine. If you like what you see, subscribe our channel uh, to our channel, follow us on Facebook. Come down and see us at SEMA. Um, uh, it doesn't take much, just a little encouragement from all of you to, to kind of encourage us to keep designing more and more products. Um, I, I really uh, thank you for spending time with us and I hope to see you out on the trail.